idea, Millie. I wonder how Ruby and the others are enjoying their trip. Not as much as this, I bet. Mm. Let's come back after we finish lunch. Even HB wouldn't guess we'd been up here. She always checks the broom chair, but she never thinks of looking on the roof. Not usually, no. No. <sighs> Except, of course, when I see four pairs of boots looking as though they've fallen from the sky, and I hear a sound quite unlike a choir of angels. Oh, please. I don't know how many times I've told you about those things. Which class are you supposed to be in? Chanting. But Miss Pat said we could practice outside because of the heat. Oh, and this is practice, is it? We were just about to start, Miss Harbroom, after we'd had a little rest. Good. Well, I'm glad you're all well rested, Mildred, because I've just conducted a tidiness inspection and Class One's lunch break is going to be very busy indeed. <laughs> We have to do this. It isn't our mess. Well, I didn't write the stuff in my own locker. H are you saying I did? No. Are you saying I did? She's just saying she didn't. And so what if I did? What are you going to do about it? It's the truth anyway. Mildred Hubble, nothing but trouble. Give up, you pair. It's too hot to argue. Oh, uh, uh, what's this? Don't you know? It stinks. Tomatoes. I bought them to take camping. That was ages ago. Let's have a look. Oh, oh. they're all stuck together in a big ball. It's all mouldy and slimy. And oh. furry. It's moving. It's alive. <laughs> Chuck it over here. Let me see. Oh. oh, salad days. I do like to see the girls playing out in the sunshine. Summer days drifting away, but oh, those summer nights. How's that feel? Wonderful. Oh, yes. Yeah. Soft breezes, the sweet song of the skylark. The delicious taste of roses. You're perfectly here, you want to know her mistress. Yes, I know, Miss Bat. It's just that I prefer them in a bar where they belong. In the same way that pupils belong in the classroom and not on the broom shed roof. I sent them outside, Miss Hardbroom, to listen to the sounds of the summer. Everything in nature chanting together in harmony. Oh, the buzzing of the bees. Trees. There are no sycamore trees out there, Miss Bat, and there's precious little harmony either. It's all lax and flabby. <laughs> oh, I do wish you'd be more careful what you say to Miss Bat. She could be in there for months. Open! Well, what is it, Ethel? There's a fight going on, Miss Cackle, in the corridor. Who? Mildred Hubble. She just went crazy and started attacking Drusilla. Get a penny for this! She started it! Yes, it was Mildred. Liar! I've had quite enough from this class today, and from some more than enough. What on earth is that disgusting smell? When you've finished with, I must not store putrefying salad in my locker, Mildred, you can start on 200 lines. I must be more careful how I dispose of my disgustingly moldy leftovers. The rest of you can go. But I'm warning you, if you think it's hot now, it's nothing to how hot it will get if this slovenliness and bad behaviour doesn't improve forthwith. And that includes you, Ethel Hallow, and you, Drusilla Paddock. I'm not sure it was altogether Mildred's fault. No, headmistress, but she's at the root of it. Midsummer madness. It starts with undone bootlaces and it ends with bare feet and body piercing. Surely not. It's time for an immediate crackdown, Miss Cackle. A return to basics. Yes, I know how you feel about it, Miss Hardroom. We're all feeling the heat at the moment. But I've been talking to Miss Bat through the staff room cupboard door and to Miss Drill and indeed to Frank Blossom and they all tend to favour a rather more creative approach. Mm. 
fresh fruit salad. With double cream. Strawberries. Raspberries. Banana. Guavas. Any kiwi fruit? Tree loads, fresh and green and juicy. Incantatus, Bibberatus, Thrybermi, Desperatus, Fizzipolis, Ariatus. Too loud, perhaps, on the last line, Mildred. Can we drink them, Miss Cackle? Go ahead. Oh, Miss. Thank you. It's the scrummiest taste I've ever tasted. Yes. It's like drinking flowers. <sighs> Lacks of flabby indeed. I'm sure she didn't mean what, what you thought she meant. Those girls would never be energised by chastising them. Nobody energised me that way. No. They need to be inspired by natural vibrations, by some cream, I think, Mr. Blossom. By the sweet celestial harmonies of the soul. Thank you. It's magic. I used to get very thirsty as a child. I used to dream I had a big tank of lemonade over my bed and a sort of tube I could just pop into my mouth. Oh, yes. That's magic as one. Magic must not be used for selfish or trivial ends. How come you let us magic these drinks then, Miss Cackle? It's just a little something for teaching purposes. And the heat does seem to have a dreadful effect on you all. It just makes you want to flop, Miss. Yes, I've noticed, Enid. Can we take off our ties, Miss? You may loosen them and undo your top buttons. Can I magic a breeze, miss? For teaching purposes. You saw what happened to your drink, Mildred. Beware of the Dr. Foster effect. What's that, miss? Dr. Foster went to Gloucester in a shower of rain. Stepped in a puddle right up to his middle and never went there again. So they say. But how did a mere shower of rain create a waist-high puddle? He was a wizard. He tried to magic the rain away. It turned into a pond and he fell in. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Mildred. Mm. Don't look so stunned, girls. Magic can often make matters worse. In fact, the project I'm going to set you now involves no magic whatsoever. I want all of you working harmoniously together in complete cooperation to try and recreate by natural means only the delicious drink which you have just enjoyed. Come on, let's start now. Let's have a project meeting. Are we going to invite them? We are supposed to cooperate. Who said we wanted to come to your meeting? <laughs> of course we'd love to come to your meeting, Mildred. Great, come on. Come on. I have every confidence that the first years will rise to the challenge, working together for the well-being and harmony of the school. That would be a change. Which is what we are striving for, is it not? I'd like you and Miss Bat. Oh, headmistress, I know I... she's a little eccentric, but her heart's in the right place. I'd like both of you to give the girls every assistance, just for this one week. For the well-being and harmony of the school. Yes. Miss Hartroom. Oh, is that appalling racket? We want to make a drink, a fizzy drink. We want a pop by a can. That's what I said. No, a special kind, one like Miss Cackle's magic pop. No magic allowed below stairs. They're so out. There won't be any. We just want it to taste the same. It's so delicious, it makes you feel... cool. Yes, so we thought if we experimented with different types of fruits, we could find out what it was made of and make enough to cool down the whole school. Miss Bat? Miss Bat? Can you hear me? We simply cannot carry on like this. Miss Hardroom didn't mean to call your Symphony of the Summer an appalling racket. I did. 
Yes, well, it didn't exactly strike me as the burbling of rooks through grassy meadows or the merry chirping of the championship. Now, look here, Miss Bat. Locking yourself in a cupboard is not going to solve anything. It will. Well, she can't stay in there forever. She can. Miss Bat, if there's anything we can say or do... She says she wants to speak to Miss Drill. She's the only one who understands her. And can she bring some more of that fruit salad? Oh! Parmesan cheese, Ethel put in. Well, you said to try everything. You have tried everything. I don't know what else it can be. No, it tasted like sunshine. Like flowers. Like sipping the smell of summer. I know, Maud. Oh, hey, who's going to help me clean up this mess? Eh? <laughs> Franco? Miss Bat feels she is not treated with the proper respect due to a senior member of staff. Well, if she constantly locks herself in a cupboard and expects us to say pretty please, sausages, turn round three times, touch green and bring her a bowl of fruit salad before she deigns to come out, what else does she expect? No, no. Miss Bat would like Miss Hardbrum to appreciate that that some of us have feelings and that chanting is an artistic subject which requires a teacher of delicate sensitivities. Oh, and does it also require a teacher with the habit of licking sticky lollies and leaving them on staff room armchairs and letting girls go wandering off during lessons and eating bunches of flowers and thumping out the school song on the harmonium like a bat out of... <coughs> Mildred Hubble, how dare you come into the staff room without knocking? There is absolutely no excuse. The door was open. What is it you wanted, girls? Some help with that project, Miss Catcott. What was it Miss Harbroom said about Miss Bat eating flowers? As I walked out one midsummer morning, as I walked out one midsummer day, oh, the sights and sounds and sweet smells of summertime. Doesn't it fill you with delight, girls? Come on, no dawdling and no sour faces. This is a complete waste of time. Gather round, girls, gather round in a ring. Mildred here wants to know if you can make a drink out of flowers. And the answer is... May we? Off you go, girls. Off you go. Harmony and cooperation. You just make me, Mildred Hubble. Pack it in, Drusilla. Certainly will. She's pretty bad. She's too old. 
she flies. She brings us good tidings. She tells us no lies. She sucks the pretty flowers to keep her voice clear. And the more ho ho she sings, cuckoo, cuckoo, the summer is near. Oh dear. like this. Nobody asked her to interfere. There was chaos. A little bit of horseplay, that's all. We've all fallen in a river from time to time. Be that as it may, it doesn't seem to have cooled anyone's temper. So I have decided that Mildred and her friends should continue with you, Miss Bat, and that Ethel and Drusilla will work in the potion lab under your supervision, Miss Hardroom. We'll end up with two lots of busy pop. But a lot less aggravation. There'll be a grand juice-sipping ceremony tomorrow afternoon in the Great Hall, and I'll give a special award to the team with the tastiest tongue-tingling drink. I still don't understand why you wanted Mildred dunked in the river. You enjoyed it, didn't you? We both got soaked. We all ended up in trouble. I don't see why... I wanted them to separate us. It's all part of my plan. We don't want Mildred and her friends to get the credit for making the best drink, do we? They've got no chance, not with this crazy flower power bat helping them. Ugh, but neither have we. Leave all that and go and see what they're up to. I'm meant to be here with you. Which one of us has the brains? I need to do some quiet study. <sighs> Picking the flowers, Miss Bat. Wow. That's brilliant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> More. Oh. 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 That's it, all right. <laughs> the taste of some. <laughs> You can eat and flowers you can drink like a uh, elder flower. What should we call this then? Younger flower. <laughs> Younger flower cordial. Bottle it and drink it. Not until tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be fizzy. No worries. We mix connect with mineral, fizzy water. <laughs> Not a spell. It's still magic. What about the Dr. Foster effect? Listen, Drusilla, there's been witches in my family for 500 years, and none of them has ever suffered from the Dr. Foster effect. Miss Cackle said... Miss Cackle said it was caused by trivial and selfish purposes. This potion is for the well-being and harmony of the whole school. We mix it in with some fruit juice or whatever, and whoever drinks it will feel as light and fresh as a summer's breeze. It is cheating, though, isn't it? We want to win, don't we? And we will. I wouldn't bank on it. They've made Cackle's magic drink without magic. And I've tasted it. And, and it's absolutely delicious. Wait till they've tasted mine. There it is. Younger flower cordial. The taste of the smell of summer. You should try a sip. It's really tongue tingling. Even more tongue tingling than we finished. Ah, just the job. What is it? Extra red hot chili pepper sauce. Time to rise to the challenge. 
And I'm pleased to say that despite setbacks and misunderstandings, we have not one but two efforts at making a delicious summer drink by natural means. Perhaps you'd like to tell us about yours first, Mildred. It's called uh, Younger Flower Cordial, and uh, would you like to taste some? Very well, Mildred. I suppose in this case the proof of the pudding is in the drinking. Looks delicious. Smells piquant. Cheers. Oh! Mildred! I'm sorry, Miss Cucker. I should think you are. I don't understand. It was delicious when we tried it, wasn't it, Miss Bat? <laughs> Would you like to try ours now, Miss Cackle? It's called Summer Breeze, and it'll make you feel as cool as cucumber and as light as air. That sounds like a very good idea, Ethel. Let's have some right away. One. Marvellous. Well done, Ethel. A little more, perhaps. I can still taste the hot pepper in the back of my throat. Are you all right, Miss Hardwood? Not altogether, Miss Cackle. It's a potion! Do something, Ethel! I can't! I can't feel the breath! The car went down! What was that? Unless I'm very much mistaken, the Dr. Foster effect. What have you got to say for yourself, Ethel Hallow? You know, Miss Bat, it really is quite like the taste of flowers. <laughs> it's lucky we make plenty. Come along, you two. You haven't paid for all your crimes yet. Keep peddling. You know, Miss Hardroom, I never realized just how far-reaching the Dr. Foster effect was. Nor I, Miss Cackle, nor I. <laughs> 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 